There it is. Okay, so just so everyone's aware, we're recording this. Um, I wanted to uh, say hello and, and welcome everybody and thank you for attending our fourth and final installation of this Willow Soul Hospital Women's Society Wickery Collaboration Speaker Series. Um, this final event, which is called Work in Progress at the Lowell Hill Hospital Women's Research Center. We're so excited to share with you the progress that we've made since opening our doors two years ago. My name is Jenny Nasuhovsky Scrivens, and I am the Senior Strategist Corporate Partnerships with the Alberta Women's Health Foundation. The Lowell Hill Hospital Women's Society is a group of women in all ages and stages of life, passionate about uh, raising awareness and important funds for the Lowell Hill Hospital Women's Society. This collaboration series was launched to offer supporters of the society and the New Alberta Women's Health Foundation exclusive insight into what is happening in women's health research. The Lois Hill Hospital Women's Research Center opened its doors almost two years ago with the goal of improving patient outcomes. This innovative center has allowed clinicians and patients to participate in research directly within the hospital setting without affecting day-to-day -day clinical operations. Tonight, we're going to learn about the progress we've made thanks to the support from the Alberta Women's Health Foundation. And before we really get going here, I'd like to, um, I'd like to take some time to do our land acknowledgement. Um, since we, I know we have people joining us from all over. Um, I think a majority of us this evening are, are from Edmonton. Um, I myself am, am located in Edmonton right now, as is the Royal Alexander Hospital Foundation. So I'd like to start by saying the, the Lowell Hill Hospital Women's Society respectfully acknowledges that we are on the traditional lands referred to as Treaty 6 territory, and that the city of Edmonton and all the people here are beneficiaries of this peace and friendship treaty. Treaty 6 encompasses traditional territories of numerous Western Canada First Nations, such as Cree, Blackfoot, Métis, Diné, and Nakota Sioux. We acknowledge all the many First Nations, Métis, and Inuit people who have called this area home since time immemorial. Just wanted to recap some of those housekeeping items. Um, we are recording this session. We ask that you stay on mute for the duration. If you're comfortable, please turn on your camera so that we can see you, but it's by no means an obligation. We understand it's late and uh, people are, are running around and we can see right into your homes or your offices. So we completely understand. Um, at the end of the session, we will have a Q&A period. You can unmute yourself, um, turn on your video and ask questions to our presenters, or you can just pop them right into the chat, whatever you're most comfortable with. So it is my honor to introduce you to um, the host this evening, and that is Dr. Sandy Davidge. Um, her bio and her list of accomplishments is extremely long. I'm trying to pare it down as briefly as possible, but it, <laughs> it's, it's not an easy feat. So I'll share with you, for those who, who may not be as familiar with Sandy, that she is a fellow of the Royal Society of Canada, very newly acknowledged, and the Canadian Academy of Health Sciences, as well as a former two-term tier one Canada research chair in maternal and perinatal cardiovascular health. In 2012, Dr. Davidge was appointed the executive director of the Women and Children's Health Research Institute. Thank you, Sandy, and I will pass it along to you. Thank you, Jenny. Although now I just lost my notes. Uh, there it are. Thank you, Jenny. This is uh, really nice. Thank you for the acknowledge land acknowledgements. You did a really nice job on that because it is important that we do that. And I appreciate you keeping that bio short. <laughs> so that was good. So tonight, I, it's a pleasure to have everyone here. Thank you all for joining us. Um, it's I'm thrilled to be able to, to share with you the people that are actually using the Lois Hill Hospital Women's Research Center, and you'll hear from their stories. So the Lois Hill Hospital Research Women's Research Center opened its doors in 2018 to offer researchers and clinicians a space to work together to improve patient outcomes. And to be clear, as Jenny said, this is without interfering with daily operations of the hospital. There needs to be a dedicated space so we're not interfering with clinical uh, care. Um, but at the same time, doing the research was as necessary as evidence for that clinical care. This is a transformative space that allowed clinical and research work to occur hand in hand to improve outcomes for women. The opening was possible through the vision and the donor dollars provided by the Royal Alexander Hospital Foundation and the partnership, which is a support from the University of Alberta, Faculty of Medicine and Dentistry and the Alberta Health Services, and as well as through WICRI as we are part of that partnership. So since the opening, research that affects women of all ages and all stages of life has gained momentum. However, hospital needs associated with COVID-19 pandemic 
did stall that work temporarily. But at the same time, it actually was allowed for that space to be able to use as an overflow for COVID patient, patients. So it's part of the, the community response to COVID. It was nice that we had that space there available. Um, it is now back for being um, research space. Uh, we just are still waiting for the official allowance to get back in there for research. So just so you know, we've all done our part in this small way to the COVID uh, pandemic response. So today we will hear updates from Dr. Laura Reyes uh, Martinez, who supports the, the center and new initiatives in women's health. We will also hear from Dr. Margie Davenport, who is here to speak on how the center has helped her research on exercise during pregnancy. And we should hear more too about the Olympic uh, um, aspects that you were talking about earlier before we came online. And finally, Maya Hendriquez will speak to how the center has helped recruit women for studies and collected much needed samples for research projects. So those are the three speakers for today. So today, right now to start, I would like to introduce you to Dr. Laura Reyes Martinez. Dr. Reyes was, has a MD from Columbia and this is so cool. She uh, received her PhD with me in my laboratory in basic science, but then did postdoctoral research and clinical research and included working with Margie Davenport. So we are growing our HQP, our high quality personnel from within. So proud of her. <laughs> Anyways, this, uh, she provides the, uh, a great skill set in clinical and basic sciences. In 2020, uh, she was hired by WICRI as a clinical research program lead in women's health. Her work takes place primarily, almost exclusively, at the Lois Hill Hospital for Women as she works to build research at the hospital as well as to support new projects in women's health. So on to you, Laura. Can you all hear me well? Yes. Okay. Uh, all right. Sandy, thank you so much for your introduction. I am very pleased to present uh, today the working hospital at the Lois Hall Hospital Women's Research Center. Oh, oh sorry. Um, so I will start with uh, telling you my story and who I am and why I'm here. And I am very excited to be here. As Sandy mentioned, I'm the clinical research program lead for the women's health uh, for WICRI, the Women and Children's Health Research Institute. Within my role, I help facilitate um, research between the researchers at the University of Alberta, Alberta Health Services and WICRI. We help communicate those research outcomes in order to promote our um, space as a leading uh, research center with the ultimate an idea uh, and goal to improve women's health. And we like to improve women's health across all lifespan. So there's actually a lot of connections for me uh, with this space. Um, first of all, my, my son was born in the Lois Hall Hospital for Women. So I do care a lot about the space. I, I was one of their patients. Also, as Sandy already mentioned, I was trained in, in her lab and I finished my PhD with her. And in 2017, I joined Margie and Craig in uh, their team. And this was a picture of the lab, how it looked like when I joined the lab. And the idea for me joining this lab is because um, they were studying at that point how women regulate their blood pressure during pregnancy. And I was lucky to be able to recruit my participants from the Lois Hall Hospital for Women's Research Center. So I was one of the first in using the space. And as you can see here in this picture, there's a participant with a complicated pregnancy. So she had high blood pressure. And while we were doing her, um, her, her study, we could monitor her blood pressure with different um, blood pressure cuffs and we can measure her fire flight system activities shown here. But most importantly, I find this space unique. And uh, let me tell you why I do think that. So as you can see in my previous picture and in this picture here, we have different um, bed settings for our participants to be really comfortable when they are doing their research. We also have other type of facilities within the area 
like our uh, blood sample collection center, our pharmacy where we can store medication. And we also have interview rooms. So not only we have top-notch uh, state-of-the-art equipment, we have really nice facilities, but what is most important about this research space is that um, we have highly skilled people working in here. So we actually can offer a really safe space to carry out research. Also, our participants felt on vacation. And let me put you a little bit more on context on, on that sense. So when a, when a patient is um, in hospital, they are usually very stressed of what is going on in their life. For them, for us to take them downstairs uh, to a facility which is very nice, very neat, very calm, it's like a breaking of their routine. And for two hours, they have something to look forward, something that take them away from or, or distract them for their reality at that point. So what are the types of research that are car carried out at the Lois Hall Hospital for Women Research Center? And I forgot to mention, but from now on, when you see all of these abbreviations, that is what I mean. Um, so we host different type of researchers. One of them is the uh, we host and help facilitate uh, research on basic science and Maya will speak uh, more about these kind of studies. So basically our researchers who study cells, they use our space to help facilitate that um, collection of tissue. So these are the scientists who like Sandy collect samples from women and they study how those cells function. We also have clinical sciences and within this um, population, there's a broad spectrum. So we can see here that there's uh, clinicians that can go and look at the data that their patient had right at the presentation of, their, of the disease of the patient that they have in front of them. So they can look their data backwards and see retrospectively what happened and they can look at their charts. But they could also include participants in their day-to-day -day clinical visits. And those are uh, studies that collect data prospectively. But also, uh, and more importantly, there's uh, room for clinical trials. And these clinical trials are interventions, um, studies that uh, give intervention to these women, and they randomly allocate a intervention in particular. So they can uh, perform all of those kinds of research. We also have studies with applied physiology. And as you can see here in the icon, I am showing a pregnant woman. And this is basically most of the studies that we carried out at this point in the, uh, at the Lois Hall Hospital Women for Research Center, um, where researchers like um, Margie and Craig study how the whole body function. And this um, data shows very translational results. So what happened with the patient at, the, at that moment uh, in place. We also host some epidemiological studies, and I would like to think that as like big data studies. So how many points of uh, data can turn into a research question and answer specific research questions. And finally, we also host qualitative research. So these are uh, research that happen, uh, that collect data that is non-numerical. So it's stories, videos, interviews that we do with participants and they can gather a lot of information for us and they build up other kind of researchers, or sorry, of research. Within our area of our weekly members, there's a whole picture of all of the research that they are interested in. Some researchers are uh, interested in the preconception phase, some of our researchers in our pre in pregnancy phase, and some researchers are uh, interested in the mature women phase. And this is just a really simple snapshot, but this is a way more complicated um, graph where every single uh, box will represent a type of a study and it will represent also multiple kind of a study within each team. So since um, we opened the space, uh, like two years, a little bit after two years of opening the space, we were also impacted with COVID. So 
as Sandy mentioned, the Lois Hall Hospital Women Research Center closed its um, doors to outpatients. It became an overflow space where pregnant women infected with COVID received their prenatal care. And it, at this point, it only allowed research participants that are coming to their doctor's appointments to be seen in the space. And this is just to take care of all of our populations. There have been a lot of talks within our whole team to when do we decide to open. And every time that we're very close to open, something else happens. So we're just very eager and we are ready to start whenever they give us the, the green uh, flight. So what have happened there? You would assume that the researchers will just get into a crisis mode, but they didn't. They just became more resilient and I am very excited for that. Most of the research moved their studies to virtual, uh, to virtual care and they adapted with the pandemic as everyone did. They started implementing technology into their different studies so they could see they could continue with the most of the studies that they would have. So for example, uh, they have implemented now uh, consent, online consent forms where uh, we use REDCap, which is uh, a program that allows us to have encrypted consent forms. And then uh, there will not be any kind of sharing of information or leaking of information for, uh, uh, into the online space. We have created different plans. And as I told you before, we're just eager and waiting for the doors to be open. So I am going to show you the research outcomes in numbers. And I hope that with these numbers, you get as excited as I am when I was pulling all of the data to put all of the, uh, all of the numbers together. But before I continue, let me tell you that it's very humbling for me to present all of these data because I am talking on behalf of many. And when I say on behalf of many, since we opened this space, we have hosted more than 10 researchers for from, from four different faculties at our university. Um, and they are all presented in this picture. Well, most of them. Um, um, from, we have hosted uh, researchers from the Faculty of Medicine and Dentistry, from the Department of Agriculture, Agricultural and Natural Sciences, from the Faculty of Kinesiology, Sport and Recreation. And we have even uh, hosted studies for our curators at the University of Alberta. But none of these would have happened without the help of our research nurse coordinators. And um, from my left uh, to right, here are Shona Littlefer, Alberta Pasco, Maya Enriquez, and Grace Shoyele. And in this picture should be also Sharina Bonifacio, but she's right now on mat leave. So that's why she's not here with us. Since we opened the space, over 200 individuals have come to Eloise Hall Hospital Women Research Center for their research visits. And these have uh, happened in all of the spans, of, in all of women's span. Oh, life, win. I hope you understand what I meant with that. <laughs> Sorry. So here I made a word map uh, to represent the area of research that we have um, hosted within the space. I would like to point out that the size of the words do not mean anything. I know that the word maps are meant to be like that, but I just wanted to make it look pretty, to be honest. And as you can see here, I would like to point out that we have hosted studies, uh, focus groups, for example, for women with menopause, focus groups on nutrition. We have hosted physiology studies on women's heart, um, blood pressure regulation, twin pregnancies, pregnancy complication. We have hosted focus groups on how participants will look at art within our uh, uh, clinical facilities. We have hosted uh, or we host two clinical trials at the moment, and they are on urogynecology. And we have hosted um, research on medical devices. So not only to um, determine the use of blood pressure cuffs in different populations, but also medical devices for treatment um, of uh, pelvic floor disorders. Finally, the one of the last uh, 
research that we had hosted is um, we, we have hosted participants that have undergone gender affirming uh, bottom surgery. So as you can see, a very broad uh, span of research. We have quite, we have done quite good on knowledge dissemination in our scientific community. So within those two years, seven manuscripts have been uh, published in highly prestigious journals. And um, with the data gathered in this, um, in our research center, we have made eight presentations in both national and international meetings. We have also held uh, knowledge dissemination in general community, and we have published two, we have done two publications uh, for, specially dire directed for the community. Um, with the opening of the space, uh, it has been, uh, we have been able to recruit personnel, and I am sorry, I put myself here first, but I was the first one recruited to, uh, to use the space, but uh, for the case of Dr. Davenport and, uh, and Dr. Steinbach, they have been able to recruit three different postdoctoral fellows, and we have, well, I was in the past, um, but they have been funded through different funding uh, research agencies uh, from national and uh, provincial level. So um, they have been funded by the Molly Towell Perinatal Research Foundation, the CIHR or the Canadian Institutes of Health and Research and the Alberta Women Health Foundation. Now, with the use of the space, we have leveraged more funding dollars and our researchers have been able to acquire approximately half a million dollars in more research. So they have used the results to leverage on more research. And these dollars have come through um, uh, scholarships and project grants. So they are building up on the research programs. And these funding have come from national agencies like CIHR, Heart Stroke, and from provincial, provincial agencies like the Alberta Women's Health Foundation. Finally, um, we, always, we always have tried to, to be engaged with our own community. So we have um, hosted many kind of collaboration, collaborations by using the space. At this point, we created um, the Cardiovascular Research Network. This network is meant to be a provincial network where researchers that are interested in um, why women that have a complicated pregnancy develop a cardiovascular disease, why they are at a higher risk of developing um, cardiac or metabolic diseases later in life. We have also facilitated, um, with the use of the space, we have also facilitated communications between groups as basic scientists with the natal pathologists. We have, uh, make sure that the teams for the cervical cancer, uh, the oncological team meet the gynecological team and they, uh, and we start the connection and we spark those research sparks that are needed to happen in order to continue growing our uh, research program. Um, the ongoing collaboration between physiology, physiologists and clinicians is, um, it's very important for us. So we continue work on, on those relationships because those are where uh, our translational research uh, can come through. And finally, we, we are even trying to get an ongoing collaboration between public health and neurogynecologists. So this is to show you that these have helped facilitated and these have helped um, um, create capacity on research capacity. So I have talked about how uh, researchers have grown because of the use of the space. And I have talked to you about how research per se have grown because of the use of the space. But what does this really mean to women's health? So let me explain you why I use this. Um, I would like to start with saying that these are very ba baby steps and that's why the baby is here. And this is to stress out the point that Research to get a research outcome from research to get an outcome from research. Sorry, to impact on women health, it takes baby steps. And why is baby steps? Because it takes a lot of time between the actual outcome 
and to get some in the line to improve women's health. However, we have been able to listen to our women and we have been reflecting on what they are telling us. Research from this space have helped create guidelines uh, to treat, uh, to treat uh, pelvic, flex, pelvic floor disorders. We have been able to change dogmas. And in this case, um, in particular, um, women blood pressure regulation during pregnancy, for example, is has always been seen as um, in in women with high blood pressure has always seen that there's an increase in the fight or flight response, and this increase is exaggerated compared to uh, pregnant women that don't have uh, high blood pressure. However, our results. Uh, change that dogma. And this is very important because all of the medication that women take at this point to decrease their blood pressure during pregnancy target the fight or flight response. It doesn't mean that it's not going to decrease their blood pressure. It means that we can create other, that these research create other opportunities to change how we see the treatment for these women. And we can uh, perhaps change um, the way that we can treat them. And finally, with um, our research, we have been able to enhance the devices that we use at this point in our life to um, monitor blood pressure for our population. So eventually it, it is improving women's health. So what is next? We're planning for the future. One of the things that we're working is improving the, commu improving the community awareness of the space. And we have done this by um, doing again baby steps we're trying to get the message across five times in five different ways um, and this we learned from dr uh, jane schultz so we're trying very hard uh, that people actually knows what's going on in our research center um, we have started communications with NACTAC, which is the uh, northern alberta clinical trial and i am um, Sorry, I am forgetting one of the letters, but they, their website hosts information for clinicians, it hosts information for patients. So now our research space is in their website. So when people is looking for places where, we, where they can uh, look for research for women, we're hosted there. We have been working on our COVID-19 safety protocol. So when we open the space, our participants feel safe and comfortable to come back and we are meeting the users. And um, this is an ongoing thing because we need to hear the feedback from our researchers. What can we do best? Uh, what do they need to change? Um, and keep the conversation going. We will increase the participant recruitment. And this is for on ongoing projects that have to be halted because of COVID. And in this, we have at least three different um, examples of projects that have to stop just because of, of COVID. So one is um, uh, shift work. So uh, one project that is aimed for, to recruit pregnant women uh, uh, working on shift works, uh, blood pressure regulation uh, during pregnancy, but this time in advanced maternal age and the use of blood pressure monitors. We're also working on new projects and these new projects are projects that are uh, with new PIs as well. So we are going to hopefully start soon the recruitment of uh, patient, um, patient and clinicians and talk about the physical activity during pregnancy, what they have been prescribing, what the participant feel about the prescription, if it matches the expectation of the physician with what the, um, the, the patient actually see. And finally, uh, one, of the, uh, one of the projects that we are hoping to uh, host is Healthy. Healthy is a Canadian initiative. It's actually a worldwide initiative and it's paired with the WHO. But in Canada, there are two only two places recruiting participants. One would be Alberta and it's a um, randomized controlled clinical trial. And in this trial, um, we're going to follow up women before getting pregnant and it will be, they will be randomly, women and families, and they will be randomly allocated to either standard of care or to have a nurse coach to go along with their um, 
uh, preconception phase and during their pregnancy. And we're going to see if that actually have an impact on their babies. So we will follow up the moms, the fathers and the babies. And um, project spending for funding that I cannot uh, speak about at this point because well, they're still pending for funding. How are we going to increase our participant recruitment? We will support uh, our researchers by facilitating the use of common, common channels of communication. So the things that they usually do, and we're going to increase our digital, digital channels of communication because as research have shown, these are excellent ways to recruit participants. We're going to continue building relationship and in the re for the researchers, this, uh, that means WIGRI is here to help. So we will make sure that the idea for the researcher goes to the next level and we will help facilitating this with all of our research platforms. We will continue uh, building our relationship with patients and stakeholders. We are engaging more with the patients. We have invited now people to sit in our research committees. So they gave us their perspective. So when we review, when the panel of experts review the research that will happen in the hospital, there will be a patient that will give their point of view. And if they feel that this is suitable to, to be a research study that can be carried out at the hospital and especially in our center, we will ask our patients what they want because we need to hear and reflect what they want and we will improve our results dissemination. If you have any question or if you want to know more about research, you're more than welcome to contact me. This is my email, this is my Twitter handle, and these are all of the channels of communication that we have within Weekly. And I would like to thank you for listening. Uh, to me for giving me the opportunity to speak to you for uh, about the things that excite me the most. And I am forever grateful um, for the foundation for all of the help to uh, improve women's health. Thank you. Wow, thank you, Laura. That was a great overview of the center and the impact. And, and I'd just like to emphasize how much the women in our city are actually directly benefiting from the research because we have a clinical research space for them to go to. It's just um, amazing. And then we're listening to them, that you, you talked about how they're part of the committees for expert review. And, and, and this will make an impact for women all over the world. It's not just here, but it has direct benefit for women here in this community. So um, I really appreciate your leadership on this and, and, and sharing that all with us today. So very, very impressive. Uh, um, pulling it all together. And this is after it's been shut down with COVID. I can't wait to we're open and, and we'll be just further, further expanding. It's just uh, amazing. So um, now I'd like to uh, uh, have a researcher at, who has uh, been using the space and, and talk about her research. So the next speaker here is Dr. Margie Davenport. She's an associate professor at the University of Alberta, as well as director of the Program for Pregnancy and Postpartum. Health, sorry, I almost forgot the health part. <laughs> um, her research program is dedicated to improving lifelong health of pregnant and postpartum women and their children, helping to improve that exercise has the power to prevent high risk complications in pregnancy. And right before everyone came on the line, we we're talking about the Olympics coming up and, and how this may, her research is actually influencing how uh, we think about exercise and pregnancy, even to the elite athlete level. So I'll turn the floor over to you, Margie, and I'm actually looking forward to hear what you might have to say about your newest research that came out. But thank you for being here and sharing your work with everybody here tonight. Thank you so much. Uh, so I'm not actually going to be talking about anything to do with elite athletes uh, tonight, but I would be more than happy to sort of informally later. So thank you very much. Um, you know, I really appreciate uh, having the opportunity to be able to speak to you tonight about the Lois Hole uh, Women's Research Center and the absolute incredible difference that it's actually made in my research program uh, since I came here uh, to the University of Alberta. So as Sandy mentioned, um, I'm an associate professor. I'm the Christensen Professor in Active Healthy Living. Uh, I was recruited to the University of Alberta um, with my husband, who I work with, uh, Dr. Craig Steinbeck, uh, by the Faculty of Kinesiology, Sport and Recreation in 2013. And I joined Wickery pretty much immediately. Within the first month, I had the opportunity to actually even meet with Sandy. Uh, which was phenomenal. Um, 
joining Wickery was absolutely critical to launching um, my research program because of all the support mechanisms um, that were in place, their core research services, funding opportunities, support for students, um, but certainly networking uh, with other researchers and uh, clinicians who have similar interests. Now, the overall goal or overarching goal of my research program is to study cardiovascular adaptations uh, following, during and following pregnancy, and then to better understand how physical activity um, contributes to improve the lifelong health of both pregnant and postpartum women and their children. Now, my main research program is actually housed um, out of the Lika Shing Center. That's where I started my research program. And within the lab, we have um, a pretty extensive uh, suite of equipment. And so you can see some of the same equipment that uh, Laura actually presented in her previous um, um, uh, presentation. We actually used to, well, I'll talk about this in a minute, but uh, keep in mind that equipment is the same equipment that we used to use over at Lois Hole when I started um, back in the early days. So because of the support that I have had through Wickery, um, through the Alberta Women's Health Foundation at the Lois Hole Hospital for Women, uh, we've really been able to advance um, quite a few studies uh, at the hospital, uh, working directly with women diagnosed with complex pregnancies, uh, such as high blood pressure during pregnancy, so preeclampsia and gestational hypertension. Now, often these women are hospitalized and they can't come to us. So we go to them. Now, this is a really old picture before the research center actually opened um, back in 2014, working with our partners and collaborators at the Lois Hole Hospital for Women. Uh, we were able to actually start to embed some really important research right on the wards uh, with patients. But in order to be able to do this, we had to pack up about $250,000 worth of equipment into these uh, lovely, heavy black and yellow cases. Uh, drag very sensitive equipment. We actually broke some of it, unfortunately. Um, dra dragged it through the snow, through the subway, um, it took it all the way to the hospital. Um, and here, these are two of uh, some of my first uh, trainees um, that were taking our portable lab over to uh, the lowest hole. Um, this is where we used to do our assessments. So we would set up pretty much anywhere that we were able to. Uh, whether it's in a patient's room or a uh, patient's lounge. And I'm sure, Laura, that brings back some great memories for you. So although this approach, it worked, um, it was exceptionally difficult. Uh, we would have to cancel studies in the main lab, uh, tear down all of the equipment, which took about three hours to tear down, take it over. Laura's nodding because she remembers this, probably tried to block it out. Um, and we actually ended up often missing patients who wanted to participate in research simply because we couldn't manage it. We couldn't get there fast enough. Um, and so for us, the Lois Hole Hospital Women's Research Center was an absolute game changer. We now have a full setup that's housed within the research center that's stored there. So we can basically go to the hospital whenever there's a patient who wants to participate in one of our studies. We don't have to scramble anymore, cancel tests on main campus. We can just send um, one of my phenomenal trainees over there. They can conduct the study. They come back. It's very quick. It's very simple. Um, it's pretty phenomenal. And we're already making progress. Um, over the last year or so, we've actually published quite a few studies which advance our understanding of how um, the heart and blood vessels adapt to healthy and complex pregnancy. We've published some of the first studies, uh, and Laura actually published some of the first studies uh, reporting on how blood pressure is controlled um, and regulated during pregnancy, how this is changing in women who have gestational diabetes, so diabetes during preg pregnancy, they have preeclampsia during pregnancy. Um, these data are critical. They're really important so that we can better understand um, how the woman's body changes with pregnancy and with pregnancy complications so that we can better understand how we can prevent and treat um, pregnancy related complications better. We've also published some of the first studies looking at uh, cardiac, so heart function in twin and triple pregnancies. There are so few individuals who have the opportunity that my team and I have um, to be able to work with um, these women. They're typically hospitalized and would never see a researcher. So this is incredible opportunities um, from my perspective. 
Now, this is a, a very old picture now um, from way back when. I look much, much younger, obviously, but um, all of this research that we do, it requires a lot of hands um, to be able to complete this type of work. And so this is a range of, from a, a number of years ago now, from our undergraduates to our graduate students um, up to our postdoctoral fellows. Um, I also, this is one of the only pictures I had of Craig that he let me show. Uh, this is Dr. Craig Steinbeck. And so we've been ex extremely lucky to be able to have a phenomenal team of students who have been supported um, by WICRI, by the Alberta Women's Health Foundation, uh, as well as other organizations uh, to be able to work with us in the lab. But I really want to emphasize um, these five incredible scientists. Um, each of them were embedded within the hospital to conduct their studies and have really greatly benefited from the opening of the Lois Hole uh, Hospital Women's Research Center. Their experiences um, working in the hospital directly with uh, women who have complex pregnancies has essentially solidified their dedication to women's health research, even as they move on to new positions, leading their own independent research programs as new, uh, as new assistant professors, as postdoctoral fellows right across Canada and uh, the United States. And Lara's already highlighted this, but I would like to really emphasize, Lara was uh, the first um, to use the uh, Women's Research Center. And I think it's uh, just incredible and I'm very proud that she is um, now the clinical research lead in women's health at WICRI and at the Lois Hole. It's, um, you can't, you really can't find anybody who is somebody who is so dedicated to the work that's going to be done there in the past, but especially moving forward into the future. But one of the beautiful things about working directly at the hospital um, is that it's opened up brand new opportunities to network and collaborate. So I'm a PhD, I'm a, I, I hold a PhD, I don't hold a medical degree. Typically, I wouldn't have the opportunity to work with a lot of clinicians. Those opportunities don't happen. But because of my interactions at the Lois Hole, um, I've been able to develop new and uh, really unexpected collaborations that I could only have dreamed happening 10 years, 15, 20 years into the future if I was lucky. And so over the last couple of years, I've been working really closely with Drs. Krana, Hornberger, Chari, and Cook to conduct clinically relevant studies that are going to advance our understanding of women's cardiovascular health it's been transformative to my research. Uh, it's opened up some brand new and exciting opportunities, um, which you don't find anywhere else in the world in my particular field. As has been mentioned, and along with absolutely every other person in the world, COVID has completely impacted the way that we do research. Um, it has been necessary. It has been important um, to slow down the work that we're doing in the hospital, but that doesn't mean that we haven't been doing something. Um, during this time, we've had the opportunity to connect virtually. We've been planning for some really exciting studies. We've been putting in grants to be able to conduct more studies. We're going to be even busier as soon as we uh, are able to go back into the hospital. We have studies planned and uh, that were paused or coming up, uh, looking at um, healthcare providers who are pregnant. Um, we're currently doing studies looking at maternal cardiac disease. Uh, this is some of the first ever when we're talking about physical activity during um, pregnancy. Uh, multiple sclerosis, uh, gestational diabetes, twin and triplets, and um, we're also looking at older moms. I was an older mom, and so this is something that's really uh, near and dear to my heart. And so as soon as we are, the doors are back open, we're, we're ready to go. Um, we've been really quite busy. But I can't underestimate or emphasize enough um, the importance of having the Alberta Women's Health Foundation support our work, promote our work, um, and allow us to be able to continue moving forward um, with this research program. We couldn't do it without you, so um, I really appreciate your support. I appreciate the opportunity to speak with you today, so thank you. That's a very brief overview of what's coming um, and what has been done. Wow, thank you, Margie. That was really powerful. And I think the, what I got from that is it's not just space. It's a place where we can do work and have our PhD scientists work with our clinician scientists 
to be at the place where the women are at, not having to come into a lab at the University of Alberta. I mean, I'm just like, I mean, I've heard you tell your story many times and I'm just still um, overwhelmed with how transformative that space is and, and the vision that our, our donors and our, our city had to build that space when they built the hospital. So I just, um, I really appreciate your time tonight and, uh, and really just retelling that story because it is, it is always just, it blows me over. So if anybody's wondering, like, why are we talking about space tonight? It's not about space. It's about people. Mm -hmm. It's about women. It's about research. And it's about the impact of that research on, on women right here in our, in our city. Makes me even tear up. <laughs> it's really bizarre. Getting emotional. All right, here we are. And our final presenter is uh, Maya Hen Hen Henricks. Sorry, I pronounced your name wrong. I, Maya, I, I'm a first name person. So if anybody has anything, it's like, yeah, I just do it by first name. So Maya. So, um, and, and it's a pleasure to have Maya here tonight. Maya works very closely with Laura as a clinical research coordinator. She helps me in my research very personally. So I really appreciate Maya and my lab group appreciates all that she does. And she uses the um, Lois Hill Hospital Women's Research Center in patient recruitment as well as sample collection. Um, and she's here to speak about how this center, and I, like I said, it's more than just the space, but, but the, the idea of the research at that, at that location at Lois Hill Hospital for Women is helping research. And we'll hear more from Maya right now. So over to you, Maya. Hi everyone, uh, I was having some technical difficulties, perfect. So Brianne is gonna help me out with my presentation. Thank you, Brianne. Uh, so I am, as Sandy said, the clinical research nurse coordinator uh, with the Women and Children's Health Research Institute. And I work out of the Lowell School Hospital Research Center. Uh, and I'm gonna talk today uh, about how that uh, center has really made a difference to my work, uh, specifically, as Sandy said, to recruitment and sample collection. Uh, so firstly, for recruitment, um, I just want to say that um, the physical space itself has been just so instrumental in allowing us to coordinate uh, our research activities. So I coordinate the recruitment of potential participants into different projects uh, related to the placenta, among a number of other things. Having the research center in the hospital itself has allowed me to really work closely with the units. Uh, the nursing units and the surrounding clinics where we actually recruit a large number of our participants from and they are patients in all of these areas. Um, as you know, working with patients in labor and delivery is highly unpredictable. Uh, so having the clinic space so close um, in proximity to everyone, it allows me to manage more participants in a day. And so that in turn with the location has just greatly contributed to us being able to increase the number of women um, that we recruit to more than ever. Uh, the next thing I wanted to talk about is the importance, um, uh, oh, sorry, still on recruitment, <laughs> is just the importance of, of having it within the lowest whole hospital. So the hospital, um, as some people may know, is all of Alberta is moving to a system called Connect Care, and they consider that research aware patient care. So we're gonna be able to be integrated into the hospital's Connect Care system by being within that facility, and it has its own research platform. So having that is gonna hugely impact how we coordinate care. It's gonna allow clinicians and the nursing units to see what patients are connected to what studies and actually be able to see what those studies entail, uh, just so that they as well can feel more connected um, to their patients that are participants uh, that they often see us interacting with. Uh, the next thing I wanted to say is that the space has been really critical in allowing us to broaden our approach when we're creating and de developing studies. Uh, so previously, um, we would try to see patients um, either throughout their pregnancy or following up after delivery, but we didn't have an actual space to bring them into for those appointments. So often we would interrupt workflow um, in different clinics and units, uh, as Margie had shown, and then Often we were left to find creative spaces to meet with these patients, whether it was a waiting room or I've heard even closets at times. Uh, so having this space is just a so beneficial for the patient for the participants to have somewhere to go to um, when they're not a patient in a clinic, they can come and be a research participant in our space. Uh, so integrating us into the hospital is just really helping to integrate research into the hospital. 
Uh, the last thing is uh, for recruitment, uh, Laura really touched on, is that it really offers a reprieve to a lot of women who are isolated to their rooms and units. Uh, so unfortunately right now, because of COVID, as they say, uh, they said we can't, but as soon as that's lifted, um, oftentimes the population that we recruit from are required to stay in hospital from weeks to months. Um, there's not much else to do other than hang out in your room. Uh, so the space really offers them a place to go, not only to interact with the research team and the coordinators, um, but just to kind of get away from, from being a patient in the hospital. Uh, so next I'm gonna talk about sample collection. Uh, so the location is really vital to supporting research related to, to labor and birth because I'm able to interact so closely with the units. Um, it's really allowed me to collect more easily all of the samples that we do collect. So um, as everyone's mentioned, we do research related to preeclampsia, uh, which Sandy really focuses on, which is high blood pressure and pregnancy, uh, babies with growth restrictions, preterm birth, and we require uh, placentas, umbilical cords, umbilical cord blood, maternal blood. Um, and the variety of the space offers really necessitates the needs of all those different studies and allows us to process all of those studies right then and there after we collect them. Um, many of the samples that we collect are actually required by different departments and programs in the hospital as well. Uh, so having me there, I'm able to collaborate and coordinate with different areas such as Canadian Cord Blood Services, um, and pathology that often require the samples for clinical evaluation. So I've really been able to work closely with all the different departments just to ensure that uh, we can carry out our research activities and they can carry out uh, their clinical investigations. Uh, the space has been pretty amazing for the University of, of Alberta research teams as well. Uh, as I mentioned, um, because uh, the samples that we collect can be so unpredictable in terms of delivery. We're often on call 24 seven to collect these samples from some of our research participants. So having this space has not only allowed me to increase my sample collection, but now the teams at the university can come, you know, in the wee hours of the, of the night, you know, anywhere 12, four in the morning and collect those samples themselves and have somewhere to go to, to kind of initiate processing them and ensuring that the other departments get them as well. Uh, often because doing it on the unit, as everyone mentioned, was just not a viable option for us. Uh, so it's been hugely impactful for our sample collection. Um, so just all in all, I just wanted to say that without the space, uh, we would not be able to collect and coordinate uh, recruitment or sample collection from so many women that we've been able to. Uh, so I just wanna share my sincere gratitude um, with all of you from the foundation for making this possible for us. So thank you. Thank you, Maya. That was great because you talked a lot about the collaboration and the integration because it's truly about research integration in the hospital. It's not just a separate space. It's us working within the system, us being researchers, <laughs> but, but researchers working hand in hand with clinicians and clinician researchers working um, in a, an environment they can. So thank you, Maya, for, for your work and, and the messaging you had here tonight. Um, so that's it for the official presentations, but we would like to open this up for questions and feedback, just dialogue. Um, we thank you for, for listening and hearing, and, um, and I hope you were as excited and emotional as I got <laughs> on the uh, transformative um, aspects by which having the, the space um, allows us to do research um, for the women who come to the Lowell Hospital for Women and make a difference uh, right here locally, but also beyond the walls. So does anybody have any questions that um, they would like to ask the panel? I have a question. Oh, Brianne's got one. Brianne, go ahead. <laughs> uh, that was such, such a great presentation. Thank you all. I learned so much. Um, this might be a question for Lara, but it's open to everyone. If we know of a woman who is interested in participating in research at the Louisville Hospital Women's Research Center, how would we connect them with, with your team? So right now, um, women can find the studies through many ways. Um, 
But if you want, you can always direct them to me. And I will always find the person who actually is uh, collecting samples or recruiting participants for many different research. Uh, research. Um, there's one website that is called Be The Cure. The problem with the website, on my opinion, is that because it's called Be The Cure, people could assume that you have to be uh, with a disease to look for research over there. But all of the studies from Margie are, you can go and type pregnancy studies and they will show up all of the studies that are been happening at this moment within Alberta. But, but again, it's like, it's because it's be the cure. But if, um, but if you have anyone that is interested, you can direct it to me and I will very happily direct it to the person who is actually doing the research that they want to be involved with. Thank you. Jenny's turn. My question is kind of in, in line with Brianne's. So Brianne, thank you for asking that. Um, I'm curious how the Alberta Women's Health Foundation can help um, help in any of that recruitment, help in amplifying um, any of your messages. And I do remember now that we have talked about that Olympic study, I do remember, Margie, your uh, call outs on social media for that. And I remember sending it to my friends. Um, so I'm just on a personal note, I'm interested in it, but from the, from the perspective of the foundation, um, I'd love to learn any of your ideas about how we can um, help in that recruitment process, whether it's participating in, in studies, um, talking with you and your team, um, the, the sample collections at the hospital, anything along those lines. Well, I, I can also help you with that answer. Um, I think that we could uh, talk offline about it, yeah, if you would like, but basically it's using all of the channels that we have to show to showcase a researcher or a research in particular. The problem is that we don't want to overwhelm uh, people with, oh, look, and this study and this study, and, and we cannot give more attention to some women or some researchers who are doing studies compared to others. But um, I, would, I would think that social media at this point, which is huge, and it's, it, it has been shown that it actually helps on, on recruitment, not so much on retention, but it helps, it helps really well with recruitment of participants. That would be one of the ways that we could, that we could interact. I believe that we need to uh, be better advocates of showing what we have done to our, um, to our women. So I think that we can offer that balance between us telling the women, look, this is what we have found. How cool is this? And this way we can start the conversation going. So it's listening to what they want to, what, so tell, they're, they're telling us what they want to, to hear, but also us telling them what we have done. Um, so I think that would be an interesting conversation and I will take you on that one. Wonderful, thank you. I don't know if anyone else wants to jump in on that, but you are more than welcome to, or we can go to the next question. Yeah, uh, well, if I may, I, I think it's really important to make the connection between research and personal outcomes or personal desires or what you want to see coming out of the research. So um, going back to what Laura was saying, you know, getting the feedback from pregnant postpartum women, mature women, um, you know, whoever else that is going to be going through the Lois Hole Hospital for Women, why not just have, you know, a survey? What is important to you? What is it that is happening with your condition that you don't have an answer for, that you don't know about? And that information feeds back to the researchers. I, I use social media to find out what people are thinking. I ask the questions. Um, we ask our ladies. And, um, you know, I, I think the better we can become at taking the questions that are from the, the people who actually need it, the better able we are to get research out there that is really going to be um, applicable and beneficial um, and you can really take it to heart, I think, in that way. I'll just add that I, 
I 100% agree with that. I think already there are so many participants that when we recruit them, instantly say, how, how can you reach me? How can you uh, let me know about the outcomes? I'd love to read the publication, all these things. And, and I definitely keep track of them and, and try to keep them integrated into that, but it would be really amazing for all of them, yeah, to have a platform to go to and, and have those answers and see those outcomes. We talked about one point, have WICRI have a website portal so people could put in some of the, but again, we're not the as much public outpacing as the Alberta Women's Health Foundation. So maybe something could be done there where you are um, asking, you know, some of those questions that people could put in, like, what is, what are things like, so, um, direct to, uh, to the Alberta Women's Health Foundation, because I think the messaging that AWHF is doing across this province, across Canada is, is amazing. And that new report that just came out, fabulous. And maybe there was a mechanism for others, not just to wait for a survey to come, but can be pro, not everyone's going to be proactive. Somebody could be proactive and uh, and and put in their thoughts and uh, to the Alberta Women's Health Foundation just because your messaging out is really going broad, which is wonderful. I love that, Sandy. I I'm getting a lot of ideas here, so I will I will take everybody up on their offers to meet offline and, and brainstorm some of these ideas because we that's exactly why we we created the foundation was to be that public facing brand and organization to be able to um, connect with more women across the province and, and share the work that you're doing um, as much as we possibly can. So um, this is very exciting. Thank you. Any other questions from the group? Um, I think then um, the only thing would be just a Margie in just two minutes or less. I just love the fact that you guys are talking about the Olympics and maybe there was going to be another survey out by Alberta women's, but we, you know, time is getting close. And then you said, Oh, I'm publishing in this area. So just two minutes or less, just because I just thought that was fascinating. Tell what your, your upcoming publication will be about. And then we will end on that note since the Olympics are only three months away. Okay. Now I have to twist my brain into exercise again. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, many, many years ago, I was a, a national team athlete. And so way back when uh, I retired at 24, I felt very old. But since the last <clears throat> 20 years, um, you know, there are more and more women who wish to combine elite sports and motherhood. And, you know, even today that we what we did is we basically did one-on-one um, -on -one interviews. We, we talked to 20 um, Olympic level athletes or national team, like they're, they were the top of the top um, athletes about their experiences um, being pregnant and returning to sport in the postpartum period. Because what we're trying to do is better understand, A, what kind of research that we actually need to do to better support them and allow them um, to be mother and an athlete at the same time, but also what policies we actually need to be able to um, support them from a broader level. So uh, stemming from that work, I can't tell you all the results because I've actually forgotten some of them that uh, you've put me on the spot. Um, <laughs> but with the social media outreach that we did, um, we actually connected um, with the uh, Canadian Olympic Committee Athletes Commission so they had a similar agenda. Their goal was to improve policies at a national level to better support um, pregnant and postpartum athletes. And so because of social media, um, we actually are moving to try and improve policy um, to support parenthood um, at the elite level um, at the exact same time. So again, I really think that um, social media and getting the word out there and asking the right questions where we need the feedback um, from pregnant postpartum women and from potential participants to find out what's actually really important to them. That entire project stemmed from a single conversation that I had with one elite athlete who couldn't return to sport afterwards. Like It's amazing where, where studies come from. That's amazing. When that comes out, let us know. Brianne will share 
widely. Brianne will share it with Alberta Women's Health Foundation, and we will we will amplify the messaging that you just uh, just told us about. So that's great. Okay. Without hearing any more questions, I'm going to hand it back to Jenny. And uh, and I appreciate everyone's attention here tonight. Um, I really I thoroughly enjoyed the evening. So uh, thank you all to all the panelists and the presenters. Really appreciate it. And back to you, Jenny. Thank you, Sandy. I just want to take a moment to uh, thank each of our presenters here tonight. I know you are very, very busy, and I know you have a lot of time commitments um, on top of all the research that you're doing. So I wanted to say thank you, Laura, Margie, and Maya for, for presenting here today. Thank you to our attendees for joining us. Um, we hope you found this very valuable, and we're so happy to to be able to share the work that we're doing right inside our hospital and our research center. Um, it's something that we're, we're very proud of. So thank you for joining us. Um, I wanna, yeah, just wrap and, and thank everybody here tonight. This is, as I said in the beginning, our fourth and final installation. So we will be putting our heads together to brainstorm um, for, for next year's series, but stay tuned and we'll be sure to notify you um, when that launches. Thank you everybody and uh, hope you have a great evening. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you.